All right. Hi, everyone. Happy Thursday and welcome to An Unlikely Story for our very special event with cartoonist Lincoln Purse in conversation with our very own Jeff Kinney. I have a couple of housekeeping items to start. If you lose your connection or your video, your sound, just either refresh your page or exit out of your browser and jump right back in. If you have questions for Lincoln, you can type them into the Ask a Question box at the bottom of the screen, and you can also upvote any questions that they float to the top. We're going to try something super cool tonight, the first time, where instead of me reading out your questions to Lincoln, um, I'm going to invite you on screen. So you will get um, a little invitation from Crowdcast that will, you know, and you will have to click accept to allow Crowdcast to access your camera and mic. So then you can ask your question on screen. It's going to be really cool. Click on the green button below to purchase a copy of Max and the Midnight's Battle of the Bodkins, and you will get one of these very special, we have signed book plates, let's see, book plates and a postcard. So you definitely want to grab your copy. Lincoln Purse is a cartoonist and writer and New York Times bestselling author of the hilarious Big Nate book series now published in 25 countries worldwide. He is also the creator of the comic strip Big Nate, which appears in over 300 US newspapers and online. Lincoln's boyhood idol was Charles Schultz of Peanuts fame, but his main inspiration for Big Nate has always been his own experience as a sixth grader. Just like Nate, Lincoln loves comics, ice hockey, and cheese doodles, and dislikes cats, figure skating, and egg salad. His Big Nate books have been featured on Good Morning America and in the Boston Globe, the Los Angeles Times, USA Today, and the Washington Post. He has also written for Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon. Lincoln joins us where he lives with his wife and children in Maine. So having finished the Big Nate series in 2016, when we were lucky enough to host him for one of our very first events, Lincoln has moved on, or should we say back, to the Middle Ages in his new series, Max and the Midnights. In book two of Max and the Midnight series, The Battle of the Bodkins, which was just released two days ago, we get more laughs, more adventures, and more silliness with Max having a tough time in night school with her best friends, the Midnights. And now I will turn it over to two other friends, Jeff and Lincoln Park. Hello, Lincoln. And hello, Pat. Welcome. Hey there. Oh, hey, there Jeff. goes Kim. Yep, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> Now, Lincoln, I, we do a lot of events here at An Unlikely Story, and I am usually very unqualified to have conversations with the authors that we have. <laughs> Today, I feel qualified. We both do something similar, and, uh, and, and you were really a mentor to me. So we, we go way back. Um, do you know how, f how far back we go? Can you guess how many years it's been? Uh, almost, almost 30. 30. Almost 30 years. That's right. When I was in college, I wanted to be a newspaper cartoonist just like you. And so I wrote to you and you wrote back and you really and truly taught me how to become a better cartoonist. Thank you for that. Now, I wanted to be a newspaper cartoonist like you and nobody liked my work. So did you sabotage my newspaper comic <laughs> career on purpose? Uh, you have found me out, Jeff. <laughs> um, but I still have those letters that you uh, wrote to me, you know, dated 1992, 1993. So yeah. I tell people, you know, Jeff Kinney and I were sort of like pen pals. Back, back, back. Oh, that's really cool. Yes, we, we were. When, when people actually wrote letters, we, we wrote letters to one another. And I actually had your letters as well. Hey, let me um, check something. Do you have another somewhere? Do you have some other device doing this event? Because I hear a little bit of an echo. Nothing. I have, a, I have a phone. I'm getting a huge echo. Yeah. But I don't have a phone doing this event. My wife may be, my, my wife may be doing this event, watching this event in another room. Okay. Do you have another tab open, Lincoln? Maybe another tab. Do I have a what open? Like another tab <laughs> in like our website. And I'm just yeah, hang on. Let me close. I'm leaving that. I don't have anything. Sorry, Is everybody. that better? Sorry, 
Okay, testing, uh -huh. testing, one, two, three. How about you? Testing, testing, one, two, three. All right. Yes, that, that's I, better for me. Okay. <laughs> Great. Okay. So what a shock! I had a tech. What a shock! I had a technical difficulty. That is that never <laughs> happens to me. <laughs> Congratulations on your publication of your second Max in the Midnight's book. Um, when you were at an unlikely story the last time, you weren't sure if you were going to do another book. How did you know you had the idea that would spark a whole nother big book? Because it's a lot of work. You, you're right. I wrote the first one thinking it was going to be a one-off. And really, it wasn't until I got to the end of the book that I thought, um, you know, I really like these characters and there is definitely more story here. So, um, so that's why it's taken almost two years to get this second book done because I, I really didn't start working on it until the first one had been published. And um, whereas the third one, there is going to be a third one, I started working on as soon as I finished the work for the second one. So the third one is, uh, I've actually finished the first draft and I'm, I'm well into it. So, wow. um, but yeah, I'm excited um, to be, to be uh, hanging out with these characters again. I really enjoy them. That's really cool. And it, it, when I was reading the book, I was like, it kind of worried me. It was like, so much work. There's just so much to it. And I'm like, how, how does this guy do this? How do you, because you're still a full-time cartoonist, you know, you have a daily comic in the papers and you've got this, you know, this sideline, which is, looks very, very time consuming. How do you split up your time? How does it work? <laughs> um, yeah, it works. It, it, it works by staying up pretty late at night. I'm a night owl. I think you're a night owl too, Jeff. Um, but I just find that after all these years of doing Big Nate, the comic strip, I sort of am able to crank out a week's worth of Big Nate, maybe in two and a half days or maybe three days. And then I have four more days in the week to work on whatever book project I have going on. So I kind of split it up that way and just go back and forth. That's really cool. So I, I just, as a side note, I'm, I'm gonna release a book sometime this spring and um, I came up with the idea. I just started it two days ago, and it will be on the press at the end of January. <laughs> so what? It's, it's a little terrifying. <laughs> um, but, but there was there's so much to your drawings. They're so detailed, and I was just wondering. You know, you're you're in your comics. You're operating in the real world, right? In in Big Nate, it's desks and in home and television and you know, it's sort of ordinary objects in, in your Max and the Midnight's book, it's a whole different scene. It's, it's, do you feel really liberated? Is it really fun to draw these fantasy scenes? And yeah, absolutely. Like yeah, definitely. I mean, um, I did a little interview the other day, um, just back and forth via email. And one of the questions was, how much research did you do about all these medieval, you know, architecture and so on and so forth? And the answer was basically hardly any <laughs> because I, I wasn't, I'm not really interested in making something that's an authentic representation of the Middle Ages. Yeah. You know, my, my uh, conception of the Middle Ages is really what I learned from watching like the movie Robin Hood or watching, you know, the, the famous Bugs Bunny cartoon where Daffy Duck is Robin Hood. You know, those, those, sorts, of, those sorts of things were much more uh, crucial to my sort of wanting to make this this look of a, a kind of a, a medieval world. So, yeah, castles and tunics and suits of armor and dragons and things like that. I mean, um, they are those are the sorts of things that aren't going to show up in any in any big Nate strips. Right. And it is fun. It, and it is fun to draw different things and to invent new characters. Yeah. When you yeah. when you write a new character. You got a character in your mind and then you have to essentially make up what that character is going to look like I, th I think that's fun yeah. yeah and did you change your drawing style a little bit in this book it just it looked like some of the ways that you draw the characters look a little bit different than the big nate style is it all the same kind of language or do you have a different language for this uh for these books well 
you know, I want to make the characters look slightly different. You know, I don't want the characters to look like big Nate characters who just happen to be wearing medieval clothing. So yeah. I probably did, even if it was only subconsciously, kind of try to tweak my style a little bit. But you sort of draw how you draw. And so yeah. um, that's just how it came out. I should I should give a shout out, too, in terms of the artwork, to. Uh, my friend and collaborator, Tom Racine, who um, this is the first book that someone has ever helped me with the visuals because I still do all the drawings, but uh, Tom added added gray tones, yeah, yeah, yeah. which which he's a master of Photoshop, so he can do he can do that sort of thing in a much more uh, time efficient way than I was ever able to. And so, uh, he was he was a huge help to me and, and really uh, an important part of how this book looks. That's really cool. So most artists, most cartoonists say, boy, I hate drawing X. You know, they hate drawing a certain thing, horses, cars, something like that. Do you have anything that when you have to draw it, you're like, oh, man, I, I can't I can't get over this fast enough. Yeah. Never draw a bicycle, Jeff. Never draw a bicycle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there I were can't. no bicycles in the Middle Ages. That's the good. That's the good news. Um, but I've, I've, I've drawn a bicycle in Big Nate maybe like twice in, in almost 30 years. I've just, I've gone out of my way to avoid it. I, and I hate drawing cars. I hate yeah, drawing cars. I don't like drawing cars either. Yeah. Um, yeah. so let's not talk about the things that we hate to draw. Let's talk about the things <laughs> we love drawing. So yeah. this book, these books are really filled with fantastical creatures. Um, what was the most fun creature to draw in this book? Oh, there's this thing called a clatterback in this book that is just a combination of many different animals. I can't even remember all the animals that were that were included in it, but I just wanted to draw something that was sort of absurd yeah. and kind of in the tradition of these, you know, these medieval beasts or these mythical beasts that are part one thing and part another. Yeah. And um, And I didn't want it to be, you know, some sort of beautiful thing like a unicorn or even a graceful thing, maybe like a dragon. I wanted it to seem sort of awkward and unwieldy. And so um, so I invented a clatterback. Yeah, that's a great, and it's it's like a part um, alligator and it ends with a squirrel. And there's- Yeah, <laughs> it's, got, it's got a squirrel tail. All right. I just did a book where I had to draw, a, I think it was a grizzly bear or something like that. And it, it was, it was rough. It was rough for me. It, it's really tough for me to do. <laughs> yeah, now, it's, it's funny, you know, as a cartoonist, it, you know, there are always those sort of awkward moments if you're like, let's say you're a bookstore and some kid wants you to draw something and they might say, can you draw the genie from Aladdin? Right. Because they think, well, this guy's a cartoonist. <laughs> of course he can draw the genie from Aladdin. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I can't really draw the genie from Aladdin. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I would, I'm would. i sure there are a lot of kids right now who would like to see you draw. And I see you've got a, a very old school um, I do. You know, thing behind you there. And I've got one too. I've got an easel. And you know, I've never been taught to draw um, anything by you, of course. But I'd love for you to give us a go at Max. How about that? Yeah, let's draw Max. All right, and any kids who are who are home can follow along with us. Okay. Grown ups, if you want to be a cartoonist, now's your shot. I'm gonna learn as you do. Okay. Well, it's gonna be it's gonna look a little sloppy, but that's okay. Sloppy that's okay. sloppy works. Um, so I'm just gonna do the head. I'm not gonna do the whole body. So, okay. So you re you really start with the outline first. Okay. Interesting. So I'm starting, you know, that that's the, so just to give myself a guideline, here's sort of the general shape of the head, but Max's head is shaped almost like a sort of a wobbly peanut. So her, this is gonna be her forehead. So okay. this part comes back in like so. Okay, you're going pencil, I'm just gonna go ink. Let's see how this works, okay. All right. Now, let's draw her nose. Uh -huh. Her nose is just an oval, sideways, sideways oval, lying on its side. And then, so here's what I meant by the, the, the peanut shape, comes in, then goes out here. 
Oh, back out. Okay, yeah. Back uh, out like so. Yeah. I better not draw until I really got it. Okay, here we go. Very symmetrical. I think I've got Popeye going here, which is not good. <laughs> Popeye is one of my all-time favorite characters. So I stop. Yeah. So um, I can make an ear here. So she's kind of symmetrical at this point. Yeah. Quite. And now she's got bangs. So we just do just do a straight line that goes yeah. like so. And then that's bigger than. Yeah, the shape of her head that I drew earlier. So in the first book, of course, Max was wearing a hat that yeah. hid the fact that she's a girl for the first, you know, 50 pages of that book, you thought yeah. that Max was a boy. But I'm going to draw her ponytail because now we know she's a girl. Did you somehow just erase something? I'm working on a whiteboard, Jeff. <laughs> Well, you could have warned me because I'm going <laughs> ink here. It's magic. Okay. It's magic. And then, um, and then the the similarity that one similarity that Max has with Nate is that they both have the same kind of eyes, which basically yeah. just just write the number eleven in the middle of her head, Jeff. Okay. Yeah, got it. All right. And then big smile five freckles, and I make lines for her hair. Yeah, yeah. One of the things I really, really like in this book is your treatment of hair for all sorts of different characters. Uh, it's really inventive, and, and it's, it's really interesting with how even with black, you're just using black as a, as a color, and you can get a lot of different effects, like shine and frizziness and all sorts of different things. I think it's yeah, really thanks, great. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Yeah. So there's so there's Max. Yeah. I went too low on the smile. A few freckles there. Okay, gotcha. That looks exactly like a wimpy kid Max. <laughs> Isn't it funny how we can't as cartoonists we can't get we can't I know. Take it, right? We we're can't we're helpless. <laughs> we're we're victims of our own drawing style. It's like a fingerprint or your voice, right? Okay, how about a a quick sketch without too much instruction on Uncle, is it Budrick or Budrick? It's Budrick. Uncle Budrick, Budrick yeah. Okay. Okay. No I'll, pencil I'll do a, this time. I don't want you to cheat. I'll do a quickie. <laughs> well, that's cool. Okay. Now, after all these years of drawing Nate, are you ever tempted to just photocopy his head and use it again and again? No. <laughs> I, I like I like drawing the old fashioned way and I know that you know I could I could write these books more quickly yeah if I you know did it digitally and and all that but I like doing it the old fashioned way and I like I just like I like drawing I like the process I like yeah. I like pen on paper yeah Right. I should. Okay. There's Uncle Budrick. Uncle Budrick, yeah. one of the world's worst troubadours. Yeah, very small eyes. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. He's got this kind of thing coming out of here. Yeah. I'm sure kids are following along at home. <laughs> I like this hair here. Kind of flips up. And in this book, you got to make everybody into dwarfs, right? Or that was the, fun. Or the kid. Yeah. You get to make yeah. them very small. Now, yeah. did you look up? Is it should it have been dwarves with a V E S? Or here's what I found out. This is what I found out, Jeff. Yeah. Um. So the word dwarves with a V. Yeah. Did not exist until Tolkien invented it for the Lord of the Rings. Every everybody did dwarfs with an F before that, and he just didn't like that. He didn't. He thought it was sort of clunky and inelegant. So yeah. he invented dwarves. Huh. But That's really interesting. but I I just went with dwarfs. So you did do some research, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Wikipedia. 
<laughs> yeah. I, I looked up my own Wikipedia page today, and I, I, th I think of Wikipedia as like, you know, the truth. And man, almost everything in it was wrong. <laughs> I was like, wow. The, and, and it started to make me doubt my own uh, research uh, <laughs> capabilities. All right, so we're going to do something here. I, I do have more questions for you, but I am sure there are a lot of kids who are a little sick of looking at both of us yeah. on the screen. So we're going to try this. We've never really done this before in Crowdcast. We're going to see. Kim, why don't you try to pull somebody in, and let's see if they have a question. So find somebody. Okay, so we are going to go with Robert because he has the number one question. So, Robert, I'm going to invite you on. Oops. Maybe. So oh, anybody? Invite. Oh, there we go. Never mind. Here we go. Okay. So right. you're going to get, you just hit okay. And yep. So anybody open. who's asked a question, be ready at a moment's notice that when you see it on your screen, that you have to click okay or accept or whatever. You have to do it pretty, pretty fast. Yeah. Yep. And I see that some people are complaining that this is really laggy. If it is for you, just hit refresh on your page. You will not be logged out and you should be able to come back in. Yeah, it'll be better. Okay, so we don't see Robert. Okay, we'll try that. So, oh, oh, there he is. Excellent. Hey, hey. Robert. Hi. Hi, Robert. An actual kid. Pretty cool. <laughs> Robert, this is just like school, except for you're on with two. Uh, cartoonist, so it's a little bit different than your regular day. So, do you have a question for Lincoln? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I saw a article about a big name TV series coming out. Are you working on that series? Yes, I am. There is a there's going to be a big Nate TV show on Nickelodeon. And it is going to debut in September of 2021. So what is that, 10 months away or nine months away? So we're getting there. And um, there are some really talented, creative people working on it. It's going to look a little different from the Big Nate you're accustomed to seeing in books because Big Nate and all the other characters are going to be 3D. They're going to be CGI. But I'm really happy with the look of the characters, and I think the show's going to be really good. So it's something to look forward to for sure. That's a great question. Awesome. All right. Great. And Thank thanks, Robert. Say goodbye and bring in another kid. Let's see how it goes. Okay. So Bye. now we are, we're going to go with Amelia. Amelia has a question. So Amelia Weishart, I'm inviting you on screen. All Keep right. an eye out for the invitation. I remember. The key is to confirm quickly. You say yes. Yes, yes. It's like buzzing in on Jeopardy. That's right. That's exactly what it is. Right. Yeah. Excellent. Hi, Amelia. Henry. Oh, I'm Henry. Actually, Henry. Oh. Hi, Henry. Hi, Henry. My question was, how do you get your ideas for your characters? Are, are they based on people you know? Well, uh, very few of the characters in either Max and the Midnights or Big Nate are based on real people. In But sometimes I name them sort of after people I have met or known. So Uncle Budrick is a good example. Budrick is the nickname that um, we've used for our son, whose real name is Elias. And we've, we've called him Budrick or Bud for for many years, and so I just always liked the name, and it sounds sort of medieval, but in, in personality and in appearance, Uncle Budrick and my son Elias are, <laughs> are nothing at all alike. Um, so I don't really base characters on real people. Um, one thing about cartooning is that you can make characters as sort of wacky and outrageous as you want, and they're usually much more colorful and outrageous than people are in real life. So most of the characters are made up. Okay. That's cool. Great question. That and is a great Kim, question. Thank you, Henry. Kim, as we're bringing in the next kid, I want to show you, that Lincoln, I still have the, the comic that you sent me. And this is really sad because you use very cheap pens. <laughs> it's faded. It's faded away to almost nothing. 
almost nothing. And of course, we kind of keep it in the sunlight here. But <laughs> you could draw, what you could draw Nate differently. What it, year it, is that from? 1991. Oh, man, that's an oldie. Yeah. yeah. I'll send you one from 2020, Jeff, <laughs> okay. to take that one's place. All right. No way. I, nothing can take the place of that one. All right. So, so uh, Kim, bring in somebody else. Okay. So I'm bringing in Owen. Owen has a sort of wimpy kid question, but it's for both of you. So we're going to go for it. All right. Hey, Owen. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> there are a lot of... It takes a minute to bring them in, but it's always worth it to see. Oh, it's way more fun. We're watching. Definitely. No, oh I like God. this. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hello, friends. Hi. 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 So there's right. three of us. So my question So it's like, I was wondering because of the 15, uh, in the 15th hour of kid book, have either of you ever been sprayed by a skunk? All right. Have I ever been sprayed by a skunk? Yeah, either I'm of glad, you. I'm glad you asked about the 15th Diary of a Wimpy Kid book, which is in <laughs> stores now. It's called The Deep End. Third this week only to President Obama's book, but, you know, I'm not trying to brag. Um, it's in the book. Uh, yeah, there's there's a skunk moment. And it's um, I have never been sprayed by a skunk, but I definitely come from skunk country in Maryland where you could just smell skunks that got run over all the time. So it hasn't happened to me. Has it happened to you? Nope. Okay. And Lincoln, has that happened to you? I've never, I've never been personally sprayed by a skunk, but my wife did one time run over a skunk which um, wreaked havoc with her car. Did you know <laughs> some people cannot smell skunk? I have a couple of cousins who can't smell skunk. Never knew that. Yeah. They, yeah. They, it must be some, some, like gen, some like genetic sort of, you know, freak genetic thing. So I kind of call them lucky. Wow. Yeah, I would call them lucky. <laughs> All right. Great question. Very cool. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay. Let's see. So, let's see. Whoops. All right. All right here, I'm scrolling back. Oh, goodbye, Micah. I'm sorry. Lincoln, I'm slipping Micah's one leaving. here. Are people in Max based on one of Nate's friends like Gasly and Randy? No. No. <laughs> I, I, I uh, you know, it's funny how people have their people have their favorite characters. So there's a, at, at my publisher, there is someone in my editor is always saying that this, this person's favorite character is Fendra the witch. And it, he is just heartbroken that Fendra the witch is basically a not, not part of uh, Max and the Midnight's Battle of the Bodkins. So people, people have their favorites for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah, yeah. All right, so Kim, are you bringing somebody else in? Yes, I have invited. Hi, Henry. Hi, Henry. Hi. Um, my question was, um, how do you like? How long does it take you to write a big Nate book? Because I've always been wondering that. So there's a couple different kinds of big Nate books. There are the books that are collections of comic strips. So um, I think the most recent one like that that's come out is. Oh, uh, I can't remember its title. Maybe it was Hug It Out. Um, and then there are other ones that are that are chapter books, and those take those take longer. So those those chapter books will take nine or ten months. The other books, the collections, they're just collections of comic strips that I have already done. So each one contains maybe oh, I don't know, 20 weeks or 25 weeks worth of comic strips. So, um, uh, and we put out a couple of those books every year. So I don't really sit down and make those kind of books the way I do with chapter books. Okay. Great question. So how that cool is that, that, Lincoln, that you do all this work and that, you know, for the, for the newspapers, you're reaching a certain type of audience and then your books just come out and reach it maybe a totally different type of audience, you know? Yeah, it's, it's I, 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 I love it. I love it because, you know, even though I I was the sort of kid that I, I did read the newspapers because I liked reading the comics, the horoscope and the sports. 
yeah. and the, and doing the jumble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I know I, I I think I was in the majority back then, and I'm certainly would be in the in the minority now of kids who who read newspapers. Kids kids discover comics usually through books. Yeah. All right, we have another kid, a set of kids. Hi. Oh, uh, we have two questions. Um, how did you come up with the idea for Nate? So uh, I came up with the idea for Nate because I'm one of those people that has just a really super great memory of what it was like to be a kid. Sixth grade in particular, I remember it. I remember it in vivid detail. I remember it better than I remember things that happened a couple of weeks ago. And so when I decided I was going to make try to do a comic strip, I eventually decided, well, I'll, I'll make this character a sixth grader because that's such a vivid, those are such vivid memories for me. And I named him Nate after my brother. Nate is my brother's nickname. And you had another question. Yeah. Um, in the third book of Max and the Midnight, will Seymour be in the third book? Seymour is in the third book, but a very small part of the third book. I can, I can, I can give you some breaking news here right now, if you guys would like. I can tell you yeah. the title of the third Max and the Midnight's book, which I haven't told anybody yet. It's going to be called The Tower of Time. I like it. Yeah. That's now there is a Rick Riordan book called The Tower of Time. Did you? Did yeah. You well, know he's just going to have to get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this Rick Riordan guy? Never heard of him. That's, That's awesome. awesome. That's cool. Thanks, you're getting, guys. Of, you're getting a lot of love for the Tower of Time. Now, did you actually have a book called The Gerbil Ate My Homework? Because uh, Matthew Jenkins thinks you did. That's it. Yes, that's the one. That's the most recent one, The Gerbil Ate My Homework. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm seeing Hamish said, hug it out. You just have so many books coming out. Your books are just spontaneously coming out on their own. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kim is working on bringing another kid in. Yes, I am. We have Susan lined up. Let's see. And Susan is it's Susan, but then their kid, you know, they log on as Susan. Yes, sometimes it's their mom. Yeah. And then we call the, the kid Susan, and then they get upset. You know. Gotcha. Or this gotcha. could be a legitimate Susan. Right. Uh oh. All right. All right. Going. All right, so maybe Susan. All right, it's King Ghastly based on Randy and his Max. Is Max based on on Nate? No, I think they're no. really saying you don't, your characters are so similarly drawn. <laughs> yes, lots of people asking which are your favorite characters in your books. Oh, well. Uh, in in Big Nate, of course, my favorite character is Nate because he's he's the main character. But there are other. I would say one of my favorite characters, temperamentally and in terms of drawing him, is Chad in Big Nate. There you are. <laughs> All right, hi there. You're on screen. Right. And is your name Susan, or is that? I can't hear you. Oh no. Oh. Uh oh. I can't hear you. Okay, why don't you just ask your question and then we'll figure it out. I think they can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Um, my question was that, um, wait, I don't want to forget what my question was. We can hear you. So if you ask your question, we can answer it. Oh, Hard to right. find those questions sometimes. Do you remember your question? I don't want to do this. <laughs> so, stage you wanted to know. A little stage fright. That's okay. That happens to everybody. Okay. So, his yeah, question so was sometimes you drive and you draw Nate differently me. than others. Yes, well. So the way you draw over time can change. So I've, I've noticed, I noticed in the first Max and the Midnight's book that when I was drawing um, Uncle Budrick, the way he looked in chapter one was slightly different from the way he ended up looking, say, in chapter 13. His beard ended up being a little different just because in the months that it took me to make all those drawings, just subtle little changes would happen. 
So, so that happens over months or over years. You know, if I've been drawing Big Nate for almost 30 years, he looks very different now than he did 30 years ago. And I can draw better now than I could then too. So, so if a character looks different, it's usually not because I'm trying to make them look different. It's just because some time has passed and it's just sort of changed without my even realizing it. Yeah. And some people are, are mentioning that they say that Big Nate, one to 17, Nate style totally changed. Um, and Matthew just <laughs> asked me, how did I come up with the character of Igdu? Um, I wanted to come up with a character that was a real odd, oddball, a really unusual character. And that's the cartoon character that I tried to get published in newspapers, but it didn't work out. Uh, but like I said, Lincoln really helped me to make that cartoon better. Eventually, I switched over to Diary of a Kid. And my mom is actually texting me right now. <laughs> I think she's watching. I she's saw her. Me too. Um, so Does she Peter, have a question? Kim, why don't we do two more questions? Why don't we do two more where yep. we bring kids in? Yeah, it could be so I, I invited Cam. Cam did not put his question in there. So his question is going to be a surprise. Okay. Oh. So he was going to type it in the chat. So Cam, if you see your... Oops, no, I invited you. What happened? Sometimes they act, they get excited. Oh, sometimes they deny it, they no. Okay, so Cam is accepting and connecting. So should we invite, does your mom have a question, Pat? Should we invite her on screen? <laughs> All right, it's Pam. All right, Pam, you don't look like a Pam. Well, let's do this. Um, I'm an artist in sixth grade. Do you have any tips on how to make my drawings better? Or Yeah, good question. So you may not like the answer, unfortunately, because the, the answer is practice drawing things you don't really like drawing or things that you find challenging. So when I was your age, I would draw a character, maybe just like I drew Budrick here or like I drew Max earlier, just the head and shoulders. And I wouldn't really focus on the bodies because I just wanted to perfect the way that the face looked. And then I realized when I would try to draw comics with those characters in them, that I needed to be able to draw those characters doing things. So you need to know how to draw your character walking up a flight of stairs, for example, or lying in bed or drinking a glass of water. So my advice is to give yourself a little challenge every day to draw, if you have a, if, if you, identify yourself as a cartoonist, I'm guessing that you've invented some of your own characters. So make yourself a challenge. Today, I'm gonna to draw this character doing such and such and make it, make it something that you wouldn't necessarily think was gonna be easy to draw. That's how you get better. Thank you. Sure. That was great. Very good question. All right, and then I'm gonna answer a side question while we're waiting for the next kid. Um, Jonathan, age 10, wants to know if there'll be another awesome friendly kid book. Yes, I'm working on it now. And so, and Jason said, I love the Who Was book about you. Jason, I still exist. It's a Who Is book. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure it won't be long. You know, I had McDonald's today. So. Are, we sh are we sure you're not a hologram, Jeff? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it will be a Who Was soon enough. They'll just do a... a a find and replace on the word is and just put was. Oh, that's um, funny. All right, so Kim, are you bringing somebody in? Yes, I have invited Carter. Carter, right, question. question. There's too many Henrys in here. I'm afraid to invite another Henry on board. <laughs> oh, well, Greg, me if you question. Julie, my wife's name is Julie. I don't think that's her though. No, I think Greg, well, he sort of did because Silas Scratch sort of looks like he could do. Um, he does all right. We're inviting a kid in, yeah. and I just wanted to know while we're waiting for this kid. So Big Nate is going to turn 30 next year, right? That's correct? In are January, doing, yeah. Are you going to do anything to celebrate? I, have, I haven't even thought about it. I've already drawn the strips that appear on the 30th anniversary of Big Nate, and I didn't do anything special. So <laughs> it's just another day. That's kind of sad. <laughs> um, so and, 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 Carter, can you hear us? Yeah, I like can. Oh, oh, okay. You're not. I just you're got video. invited. <laughs> Sorry, my family just rushed in. So, my question was, what was your favorite Big Nate book, like the comics? 
to write and to draw and to publish? Like, no. Your favorite novel, not comic book. Gotcha. Good question. Well, my favorite novel, there were eight of them. And my favorite was the fourth one called Big Nate Goes for Broke. Because uh, for a couple of reasons, that was the book that introduced a character named Dee Dee, who has become a really big part of Big Nate's world and is gonna be a huge part of the Big Nate TV show. And it's also the only Big Nate book that took place in the winter time. And I'm a fan of winter. I like winter and I liked the experience of drawing winter, wintry pictures. You know, there's snowball fights, there's a snow sculpture contest in that book. There's a lot of fun wintry things. So that's my favorite. That's really cool. Great question. And I think we're gonna wrap this up in a moment here. I just wanted to uh, remind everybody that if you click on that green thing below, you won't be logged out of this. It will take you to a separate thing and you can get Lincoln's book with his signature. I was so excited when I was a kid, when I was a teenager to get Lincoln's signature. I really treasured it. Um, so you can get that, the book plates and, and some other things and you can be supporting an independent bookstore, which is always good to do. And you can get it in time for Christmas, which would be awesome. Um, and so Lincoln, my question for you, my last question for you doesn't have anything to do with, um, with, uh, with cartooning or anything like that. My question is when the world opens up again and you can do anything safely, what is the first, what is the thing that you're looking forward to doing the most? Oh, playing hockey. So I, I, I play, I play old men's league hockey and hockey is like a lot of sports, but even even more so than some has been identified as sort of like a super spreader. And um, and so my old men's hockey uh, since March has been shut down. And this is the longest I've gone without playing hockey or skating in my life. And of course, and I miss all the, my friends that I play hockey with. So that's what I'll be most excited about for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I saw, I saw one question from Miles Jandra. I'm, I'm looking back because I wanted to answer that. Miles, do you want to type in your question again and then I'll make sure we get it answered because I know you wanted it answered and just give us one second. Oh, she, they ask, are we frozen? Okay, we're gonna hang out for just one moment. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, and a shout out to Justice. Uh, your birthday's tomorrow. Happy birthday. Tonight, happy birthday. From, from at least one of your favorite cartoonists. I mean, you might have come for Lincoln. You might have come for me. Uh, but that's double digits, which is pretty exciting. Okay. So uh, I messed up. I um, Justice's dad had emailed me ahead of time, and so he was wondering if you guys could shout out and say happy birthday. I did. I'm bringing Justice on screen, so you can just oh, cool. him a happy go. birthday. Yeah, hey, no absolutely. spamming. Stop clapping. <laughs> No spam. All right. Hello. Excellent. Justice. Hey. Hello. Justice. Happy birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday. That's, Thanks. that's so awesome. And what part of the country do you live in? Uh, the Midwest. The Midwest. Oh, thank you so much for tuning in here. Have you read um, Max and the Midnights at all? No, but I've read almost every Big Nate book. Oh, that's awesome. Cool. Well, if you like Big and, Nate, if you like Big the, Nate, you'll love Max and the Midnights. Books. Yeah, I'm, tr I'm trying to get my dad to do the autograph book thing. Oh, you definitely should. It's worth it, you know? It's really cool to get and, that. And how, and how old are you going to be? 10. 10? Tomorrow? Good age. Good That's age. Double cool. digits. Yeah. Double digits. That's a big one. Enjoy it being a kid. It feels weird. <laughs> um, having to write an extra number when I put down my age. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. Wait till you get up there like me and Lincoln. But mostly, like say you're playing <laughs> old man hockey. <laughs> yeah, but mostly, but mostly me. When when Jeff says, "Oh, remember when I got your autograph when I was a teenager?" Thank <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> All right. Well, happy awesome. birthday to you. Thank you Thanks. to everybody who who tuned in uh, tonight. This was really fun to catch up with an old friend, and I think we've made some new ones along the way. So thank you very much, Lincoln. We're looking forward to. Thank you, Justice. Happy birthday, bud. Absolutely. We're looking forward to good times ahead. Thanks, everybody, for being here. And I see uh, Miles says, if I come to an unlikely story, will I be there? The answer is sometime. So I hope I get to meet you. <laughs> All right. <laughs>
Take care, Lincoln. Thanks, everyone, who tuned in tonight. Bye-bye, everybody.